You're welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now we're taking our first hot topic, and that is the fact that federal government has granted six firms license to import petroleum products into the country. Uh, okay, we are being joined by Nick Agule, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program, Nick. Uh, good morning, and good morning to Nigerians. Okay, uh, well, we've been told that um, six companies, that is five, including Dangote refineries, have been given licenses to import uh, petrol into the country. Uh, let's begin with that. How does that make you feel? I makes me to, to feel very happy because this shows that Nigeria is now ready for business. And this is what we have been advocating all the time for a total deregulation of the downstream sector. And this step that has now been taken is what is now going to make Nigerians to pay the correct price for petrol. And I believe that if there is total deregulation and competition is allowed in the sector that Nigerians will buy a litre of petrol at far less than the current 500 plus that the NNPC is forcing down our throats as a monopoly. Mm. Okay, but does it not worry you? In the report I saw, maybe there are other reports that um, <clears throat> have names, but the report I saw, these people, these companies, the six companies, were not named. Uh, recall that last week or so, uh, the, the House of Reps uh, rejected uh, the call or the move by one of the members of the House to suspend the license that was given to Dangote to be the sole importer of petrol into the country. Even though NNPCL has said that they don't have that power to give that, those licenses, uh, that they didn't give Dangote the license, the House of Reps rejected the motion. How do you reject a motion of something that is not existing, which means that it does exist, that he was given that kind of a license? By whom, we may not know, but he was given that kind of a license. And now this report has shown or has told us that six firms, that is including Dangote, will now have that power to import in July. That all, so many other people uh, applied for it, they can also Im uh, import on later days, but the people who were ready to import in July were six, that is including Dangote. Does it not worry you that it is shrouded in the kind of secrecy that we don't want at this time? It worries me. And the two aspects that you have addressed, both of them will worry me. Uh, first and foremost, the one on the House of Representatives. I think they have started off very badly and there is time for them to take, to have a rethink and ask themselves, what are they in that House of Representatives for? Are they there for themselves or they are there for the Nigerian people? Because if they are there for themselves, then they should better pack their, their bags and go home so that those who will be there for the Nigerian people should come in. You cannot phantom that a motion was before the House to say that the NMPC giving a sole importer license to a company, whether Dangote or any company, and that kind of motion to reject such uh, a license issuance uh, is being rejected by the House of Representatives. Why are they rejecting it? Why? Is it that the, the, the sole importer can now continue from where the NMPC left by forcing down our throats prices that are imbued with a lot of inefficiencies or what. So the House of Representatives, for me, they have started off on a very wrong footing, and it's time for them to correct uh, their steps. I would have, I would have preferred that they accepted the motion to reject that so important license, and then it turned out to be that the, there was even no license that was issued. Mm. Mm. But, but by not even knowing whether there was license or not for them to reject, there is just no basis for them. They should be working for the Nigerian people because mm. ultimately it's the Nigerian people who will suffer these inefficiencies that we have been 
uh, falls down to suffer uh, by the NMPC. So that's about the house. Mm -hmm. Then uh, about the second aspect that you have taken, uh, which is the lack of transparency. Again, it worries me. I mean, the, the, the people in government should understand that they are in government for themselves. They are in government as servants of the people. That is why they are called civil servants or public servants. It, it looks as if that name servant is lost on them. If you are a servant, you are, you are bound to report to your master. You know, there is no way they can issue such an amorphous statement and say, we have issued import licenses to six companies and don't name the companies. We are the masters of these servants. They should report to us who these companies are so that we on our own can do due diligence on these companies and go and check the background of these companies and know whether these companies are genuine businesses or they are some sort of share companies that have been set up by people who want to continue to subjugate us and loot us as they were doing with the fuel subsidy. So I am not happy that the downstream authority uh, have shrouded in secrecy uh, the companies that they say they have awarded this license to. And I would also like to say that six companies uh, is not enough. Six companies is not enough. Six companies will still constitute a cartel until we license about 50 to 100 companies to import petrol, we're not going to see true competition. And for so long as we don't see true competition, we're not going to pay the right prices at the tank, I mean at the pump. And that is what Nigeria needs. We need to pay the right prices at the pump, and I believe that the right prices will be far less than the 500 naira per liter that we're buying now. Yeah, it's... It, it... Another thing they said is that NNPC, what the, uh, um, the, the spokesman said is that NNPC has 30 days of fuel sufficiency, so there will be no gap. So in July, these six companies are going to import um, uh, fuel while NNPC will supply the nation with this fuel that they have in stock. Now the question is, when did they buy this uh, fuel that was talked, uh, that, has, that, that, has, that is in stock? that they are going to sell to Nigerians, was it when the subsidy was still being paid? And if the subsidy was still being paid by our country, the subsidy was still paid by tax, uh, with taxpayers' uh, money, and then NNPC is now selling at the price they will start selling. They have already started selling at a new pump price. Why are they shortchanging us? Is it possible that we can monitor and make sure that there is more transparency in this regime, that the new regime that has come? Uh, of, the, of, of us surviving without fuel subsidy. Okay, they have bought fuel for 30 days in July. They are going to have sufficient fuel. They have given licenses to six companies, but this fuel must have been bought when there was subsidy. Why are they suffering Nigerians? What can Nigerians do in the face of this uh, kind of situation? I think you touched on a, on a very, very important uh, topic there. And this is what we have always said. You see, if we go back a few days ago, President Tinubu on May 29th made his inaugural speech where he said subsidy is gone or he does not have the budget for subsidy. And the following day, the 30th of May, the NMPC hikes the price of petrol mm -hmm. from about 180 to 190.95 to, to 500, 500 uh, and 40, 550, depending on which region. And to me, that was totally unfair of the NMPC to engage in such a business practice. Because as at the date that uh, President Tinubu made his inaugural speech, the NMPC would have carried at least 30 days of fuel sufficiency, which is what they are now confessing to us. And it would have then meant that those, uh, those uh, 30 days fuel supply uh, had subsidy on them. And remember, the budget for 2023 has got subsidy all the way to 30th of June. Mm. So today being the 21st of June, we still have budget provision for subsidy for another week plus. And in all this, the NMPC then decides that they are going to force on Nigerians a, a hike in the price of petrol 
regardless of the fact that the petrol that they are now selling at 500 and something naira was imported under the subsidy regime and subsidy was paid on it. So these are the kind of sharp practices that are unfortunately a government-owned company that should be protecting the, the citizen because we are the owners of the NMPC. Well, we are the owners of the NMPC. A, a lot of people even misconstrue NMPC to be like a regulator. The NMPC is not a regulator in the petroleum industry. The regulator in the petroleum industry used to be the Department for Petroleum Resources, DPR. But uh, the PIA, the Petroleum Industry Act, actually split the regulator into the upstream commission and the downstream authority. So the, the NMPC, for its upstream business, is being regulated by the upstream uh, commission and then for its downstream business by the downstream authority. The NMPC is just like Shell or Chevron or Mobile. The NMPC is a company that is expected to be running business. You know, the NMPC shouldn't be the one that should be controlling the petroleum sector. They are, they are just uh, one of the companies and the, the shares and mobiles and chevrons and totals are their competitors. And the ownership of the NMPC is by Nigerians. We are the owners of Nigeria, of I mean, of the NMPC. So how can the company that we own, we continue to perpetrate this kind of sharp practices upon us? I don't think uh, President Tunibu has started well. He is cleansing all the areas that have been pinning us down in the past. And the next place he needs to look at is the NMPC. I believe that the entire management of the NMPC has outlived their usefulness. They should be allowed to go home and rest. So that new people who have the vision of the president should come in into the saddle and run NMPC like a business. And run NMPC for the benefit of Nigerians and not the benefit of a few people who have been subjugating us and looting the commonwealth. And even now, we can see the transparency that is coming in. As simple as naming the six companies that have been given the licenses, we don't know them. So the NMPC structure, as we have it now, has outlived its usefulness. OK, but uh, aside from the fact that we're talking petroleum and all that, uh, in this, uh, the, the new era, uh, we're talking electric cars, we're talking some, um, renewable energy, we're talking solar systems and all that. Yesterday I even saw a, a video clip on the social media where someone was using uh, a tree to generate electricity. I think, um, yeah, a tree to generate electricity, and which means the alternative means of doing a lot of things nowadays. Do you really think what we're spending so far in in uh, this exploring for oil and every other thing is worth it. Shouldn't we be branching off to other things, how to get our energy and how to run our cars? Because even a company, a car company in Nigeria is already uh, looking at running cars on uh, gas. And then others are thinking about electric electricity to run cars and all that. Is it really worth it, all the, the hula baloo about, about petroleum? Okay, so uh, uh, this is an interesting conversation, and it's very important that we should be having these conversations. There is something that is called the energy mix. The energy mix means the different sources. It's like, like bringing in different ingredients into a pot and cooking your soup. So the different sources of energy, how they are mixed to ensure that a nation has uninterrupted power supply. And also a nation has in abundance all the needed uh, energy requirements for that nation. And you will see that globally, uh, fossil fuels, which is uh, what crude oil is called, uh, and, and gas is called, they, 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 they are still carrying a large chunk of the energy mix. Uh, also globally, as we speak today, there are companies that are still taking final investment decisions to sink oil wells or to build refineries or to build all the other infrastructure that will ensure that uh, uh, crude oil is, uh, is, is produced. Uh, however, the, the, the renewable energy as part of the mix is also growing in importance and influence. Uh, so it's going to take a, a while for 
the coexistence of the fossil fuels and renewable energies as a mix. So as there is a declining uh, share of fossil fuels, there will be an increasing share of um, uh, renewable energy. But as we speak today, 2023, we cannot just uh, uproot uh, fossil fuels and throw them into the trash can. They are still very important, uh, especially for gas. Uh, the, the gas is still uh, supplying uh, the, the, the greatest chunk, uh, over 70% of electricity uh, in, the, in the world as we speak today. Uh, and you, you spoke about gas and cars, that's what is called compressed natural, uh, natural gas, CNG. Uh, it's something we should also be looking at. Uh, other nations are using this. You spoke about electric cars. It's something that is also coming up. You know, so if we use gas to generate electricity and then use them in the cars, we will totally uh, avoid uh, 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 crude oil, we will totally avoid petrol, petrol in our cars. But these things require money. They require investment. And in Nigeria, we are not having enough of this investment. And that is because the business climate in Nigeria is, uh, is, is not right. And so what the current government needs to do is to ensure that they fix those things that are making Nigeria not to be a beautiful bride to investor monies. As we speak today, there are trillions of dollars of investor funds that are floating around the world. The world is no longer having boundaries when it comes to uh, investments and financials and all of that. And Nigeria, a, a market of over 200 million people, uh, a country with uh, almost no natural disasters, a country with uh, beautiful, fertile, arable land, a country with all sorts of energy sources. We have the winds all over the place. We have uh, waters. You know, every community in Nigeria has a river around it, not far from it. So we should tap into these things. Nigeria should open itself up. We, we are guaranteed, I'm, I'm looking at the solar panels you are showing there, we are guaranteed about 8 to 10 hours of pure sunshine every day. That is what other countries like the UK don't have. The UK during winter, they don't even see the sun for two hours. That is why you see all the trees shed their leaves and, and, and all of that. But they are not seeing enough uh, sunshine. But in Nigeria, we see sunshine every day. So we should not, and, and the, the other good thing that has happened is that President Tinubu has kicked the ball rolling. He has signed into law the Electricity Bill. So we have an Electricity Act now. And the import of that act is that, unlike before, where electricity generation, transmission, and distribution were solely in the hands of the federal government, now it has been liberalized such that states and local governments corporate entities and individuals, communities, can generate and distribute electricity uh, within, their, within their clients. And, and, and that is a, a very good one. But I also want to tell the federal government that as we speak today, the federal government is the one that owns most of the infrastructure in electricity generation. And the federal government, President Tinubu needs to take the next step. I will sign the Electricity Act. He now needs to take the next step by looking at the current structure of the electricity sector in Nigeria that has been delivering to us 3,000 megawatts of electricity for so long. 3,000 megawatts of electricity is so abysmal for 200 million people. Look, the, the tiny nation of Qatar that hosted the World Cup the last time, Qatar populate, Qatar's population is about 3 million. And 3 million is population of, and most states in Nigeria have more than 3 million people. And Qatar's electricity generation, transmission and distribution is 8,500 megawatts per day. 8,500 megawatts for 3 million people. And we are giving 3 mega, 3,000 megawatts to 200 million people. It doesn't make sense. I mean, you look at a nation like Brazil that has a similar population to us, over 200 million people. Brazil are supplying 150,000 megawatts of electricity every day to their economy. Check 150,000 and our 3,000. Our 3,000 is so abysmally low, it should not be allowed to even last for any longer. And we, we, we have electricity stranded in the federally controlled electricity sector. 
President Tinubu needs to go in there. That should be one place he needs to go to because, to be honest, if you don't have sufficient power supply, there's nothing you can do to the economy. It will never grow. Okay, uh, this will be a good place to leave it. President Bo, uh, Tinubu has kicked the ball rolling. We do hope that the ball is not rolling to offside or corner kick or penalty where we will be shooting ourselves in the foot. But um, we do hope that uh, things will get better and better. But you touched on uh, power and all that. Um, what do you think is the reason uh, hindering the development of uh, this alternative means of uh, power generation and all that in Nigeria that you think, now that you are uh, advising the government, what uh, they need to do to make sure these things come to, come to be. Because we have sufficient sunlight, as you said, we have sufficient water bodies, we have everything that we need to generate power, alternative power sources and all that, and we're still operating on a 3,000 megawatt electricity in this our country. What do you think are the things that need to be removed if uh, we need to get to that point you are wanting us to get to? Yeah, the, the, thank you very much for that question. It's very important that the, the, the people who have come into government now should hear us out. You know, the first thing they have to be that they have to open Nigeria up for business. Nigeria needs to be opened up for business. And the different aspects that you have to open Nigeria up for business include like security. Nobody wants to bring their staff and their money into a company in a country where they can be kidnapped and nothing will happen. So the government has to tackle security. Yes. Uh, President Tinubu has now changed the service chiefs and the other heads of security agencies. We hope those guys are going to hit the ground running. And uh, other things like the ease of doing business. How easy is it to incorporate a company? How easy is it to get licensing? How easy is it to, to get government officials to do this? And those are the kind of things that need to be done. But then, in the very short term, the low-hanging fruit that we have is the existing infrastructure that is there. We have the generating companies, most of them now privatized. We have the transmission, which is government controlled, and we have the distribution companies. President Tinubu needs to call for a, 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 a conference of all the stakeholders in this electricity sector to understand what the issues are, to ask a singular question. Why are we giving 3,000 megawatts? And what can we do immediately to increase that to at least 10,000 in the short term? And one thing I will tell him is that generation, uh, was privatized and it was privatized to business people like Ote Dollars and the Tony Lumerus of this world. They can bring money in there and generate more, but the bottleneck is transmission because the transmission is in the hands of government and government is not investing there. The, the generation cannot generate more than transmission can carry and distribution cannot distribute what transmission has been given them. So one of the first steps that President Tinubu needs to take now is to privatize the, trans the transmission sector. Totally privatize it, take regulate it. Let financial capital come in. Expertise, the engineering, everything, to expand that transmission network to at least 30,000 megawatts in the next one or two years. And then generation will start, will not, will start pushing enough power through the transmission network. But then there is a big issue with distribution. Distribution companies were sold to politically exposed persons. And President Tinubu needs to go into that sector. Either these guys who don't have the money or the expertise to, you know, actually develop the distribution sector, we now either have to be forced to have technical partnerships with people who can come in and do it, or those licenses have to be cancelled and new licenses issued to people who have the way with that to do it. You see, the difference between the privatization of the distribution sector and the telecoms is that the telecoms were the licenses were sold to operators in the telecom sector, the MTNs and the ETS, and that is why they are doing better. In the distribution, this thing was sold to politicians who never had a pedigree in the power sector, and they had just been, you know, sitting on those licenses and increasing our tariffs. You know, when you, you hear cost reflective tariff. What, what we are saying here is that the, the, the cost of running the, the electricity sector is rising, but not the output. So if you look at the equation, uh, the unit cost of electricity, which is total cost divided by 
the megawatts. Megawatts has remained 3,000, that's the denominator. While the numerator, which is the cost of running, has been rising, rising because we used to have one NEPA, you know, and one managing director. Now we have how many generation companies with so many managing directors? How many uh, distribution companies? You hear just Disco, uh, Ikeja Disco, Lisa. These are all managing directors. We all set of executive directors with all the this thing. That is rising the cost. And Nigerians keep getting additional tariffs, additional tariffs will rise. The output, which is what should be increasing to reduce the unit cost, has remained 3,000 megawatts. So mm. President Tinubu just needs to go into that sector and just, he needs to disaggregate that sector. He needs to unbundle it. He needs to just open it up to world, global capital to come in and just generate electricity for Nigeria. If President Tinubu succeeds in his, in his four years tenure, to increase the, the, the electricity supply from 3,000 megawatts to 30,000 megawatts, Nigeria economy will take off. He won't even need to do anything. The private sector will just carry on. And you will not even believe mm -hmm. this is Nigeria again. The jobs created, they will be unbelievable. Mm -hmm. right. Well, before we round off, uh, you said something about um, uh, regulators in the, in the petroleum sector uh, being split into two and they are now the regulators. I, will you be comfortable if the people or those groups or those agencies are still the regulators or if we are talking about removing subsidy and uh, privatizing or whatever we need to do in the, in, the, in the oil sector, do you think a different body should run or should, uh, yes, should take up the responsibility of guiding that uh, sector to where it should be, or it should still be the people who are regulating it right now. Because they were there before the deregulation, and they are still here after the deregulation. Are you comfortable with them being at the helm of affairs? So the, 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 the structure itself, the, these two regulators that we have now for the petroleum industry, that is the upstream commission and the downstream authority, uh, which were created by the PIA, are structures. They are, they are okay. The structures are there. The real issue are the people who are running the structures. Look, if, if I give someone a BMW car now, the BMW car itself will be a supercar, a very efficient car. But the driver of that car, one can either one can crash that car because he's, he's managing the car very badly and the other okay. can actually uh, travel with that car for years without any problem. Mm. And so what is happening is that the people who are running these this, uh, this, uh, regulatory uh, agencies are the ones that need to be changed. You know, they, they haven't delivered for Nigerians. Like I speak to you now, uh, uh, and I was reading, uh, hearing a report about this. Majority of petrol stations in Nigeria are not giving consumers the liter of petrol that they have paid for. Mm. You pay for mm. one liter of petrol at 500 plus, and what goes into your tank is less than a liter. And the person who is supposed to ensure that Nigerians are not scammed in that way is the downstream authority. And the downstream authority have offices all over Nigeria. In every state of Nigeria, they are there. Ask the officers in this, in this authority. If they came to work today, as they are at work as we speak now. Why are they allowing Nigeria to be scammed by petrol uh, operators, by not giving us uh, the, the, the litter that we paid for? Mm. So what happens there is leadership. If the leadership of this, you know, you, you cannot have new wine and then put it in old wine skins. If you have new wine, you must put, uh, or rather, you cannot have new wine skins and be putting old wine. You have to have new wine skins and new wine put inside. So since we now have these two brand new uh, regulatory agencies, mm -hmm. government also needed to have swept away their leadership and bring a leadership that is now going to use these structures, these legal uh, instruments that okay. we now have, to ensure that Nigerians get their just due from the petroleum sector. All right. That's what's needed. Okay. And President Tinibu needs to go there. All right. Yeah. Uh, Nick, thank you so much, as usual, for giving us insight into this uh, topic. We're very grateful that you were able to make it this morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you.
Okay, we've been talking with Nick Agule, public affairs analyst. Uh, we were looking at uh, the fact that federal government has granted six firms uh, licenses to import petroleum products into the country and sundry other issues that we uh, were able to delve into. We'll take a short break now. When we return, it will be time for sports. Stay with us. <laughs> 